Welcome to Kingdom Living Ministries, where our vision is knowing God, loving people, and making disciples. We trust this week's message will be a blessing to your life. Enjoy the teaching ministry of KLM. Uh, we've been talking about ears. <laughs> How many ears you have? Two. Two. How many mouses? Mouse. One. Okay. So we want to give you an opportunity to train your ears this morning for, for increase. Amen. Amen. How many know that God has increase on his mind? Glory to God. Increase on his mind. So um, great faith requires great hearing. All right, that was where for you coming here. Great faith requires great hearing. So if you want, I don't know about you, but I want my faith to increase. Um, um, just a faith that goes and continues to grow. And, and um, I don't want to be the same place I am right now, a year from now, even a month from now, and even a week from now. So I need to increase my hearing. Great faith requires great hearing. So if you want to increase your faith, how many people want to increase your faith? All right. You got to increase your hearing. I mean, you want to increase your incre have increase in your life. You want you want to increase your ability to increase. Amen. All right, so you increase your hearing. You, your key, the keys to your increase is your your ears. And I'm not just talking about these things that um, you have right here, but I'm talking about your spiritual ears. You can you can increase your faith. You can hear when you read. So when you read, that's a form of hearing. So don't limit to the sounds and the vibration that goes through these two things here. And um, so the Spirit of the Lord has us on here, and we're just going to continue to flow and until he le leaves us otherwise, right? So we we're not bound by um, my little schedule that I, I put up year after year after year, but we actually want to just follow the Holy Spirit. That's a good prayer for you to pray for your pastor that I'm be led by the spirit and, and be faithful to the gospel. And so let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you in Jesus name. I thank you for this ability to, by your grace, to communicate your word to your people. I pray Holy Spirit that you would think through my mind, speak through these lips of clay. May I speak words of faith and words of truth and words of life. I thank you for seizing, seasoning my words with grace. I speak not as a mere man, but I yield, I connect my spirit to my, my mouth to my spirit, and I speak as the oracles of God, and I flow out of the graces that you've called me to. I thank you that there's great faith that will increase in the hearts of your people today. I thank you for renewing our minds and, and strengthening our faith and causing us to be all that you've called us to be in Jesus name. Amen. I don't know about you, but I want to maximize my potential. I want to become all that God wants me to become. I want to grow. I want to not just sit, be a wonderful theme for 2024 growth is now, but I actually want to grow in every area. I want to grow physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, financially growth is now, and it could be yours if you'll just increase your hearing. Amen. So God is good and his mercy endures forever. I, I was convinced um, when I was a um, teenager, I, I was convinced that if I could hear from God, I can make it. If I could just hear from God, I heard many people say they hear from God. And, and you, you think about that. And a lot of times I was looking for an audible voice, but we're not to seek audible voices. I can count on two fingers how many times I heard the audible voice of God. And it is not something that we, we should strive to hear, but I want us to go through the Bible to see how God actually leads us and guides us. We have many decisions to make. We make a lot of decisions. I forget, it's some, I think I read one report, it was like 35,000 decisions that we make within one day. That's a lot of decision making. <laughs> From putting our clothes on, for eating, to work, to what are we going to watch, streaming services? There's a lot of decisions that we make daily. 
So I want to I want to look. How do we get the max? I was thinking about this too, to maximize our ability to be led by the Spirit of God. Just that, just that thought came to my head to maximize our ability to be led by the Spirit of God. And God wants to lead us. Uh, we, we are not to seek, I said this last week, we're not to seek voices, but we're to seek the guidance of God. And the guidance of God is different than a voice or some kind of supernatural, spectacular thing. Well, I should say spectacular, because the Lord's guidance is supernatural. But it's not all, sometimes it's so supernatural but yet it's so normal and so natural that you can miss it. So I want to give, so the title of my message is called Training Your Ears to Hear God. Training your ears, turn to your neighbor and say, Training your ears to hear God. All right. Um, say, Father, give unto me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. That the eyes of my understanding may be enlightened. That I may know what is the hope of your calling. What are the riches of your inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of your power towards us who believes? In Jesus' name. All right. All right. The Lord is always speaking. I'm telling you, he speaks more than you can imagine. He wants to lead you and guide you. We looked at a scripture from Psalm 37, verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. The Lord will order your steps if you'll just allow him to order it. And he pays for what he orders. He he provides where he guides. He feeds where he leads. And I'm telling you, if you'll follow and connect up with the Lord, he'll lead you from victory to victory to victory to victory. And he will lead you even through the fire and you won't get burnt and won't smell like it. He drove the he drove Jesus. The Holy Spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted by the enemy. No, it wasn't that that wasn't God, but is tempted by the enemy. And yet he held he gave him guidance and led him and prompted him and how to defeat the enemy by using the word of God. And yet we, Jesus can relate to us. He, he's been where we are. <laughs> and, and I'm telling you, it, there's some victories that God has in store for his people today. Amen. And he, he, can be, he wants to lead you even in this service. And he wants to lead you for every day of your life. And that is the difference makers, difference, the difference maker in our life, the Holy Spirit leading us and guiding us. He wants to guide us and lead us. There's great things he has in store for us. But unfortunately, many Christians will never walk into the fullness of it. But I I, I believe in God that you will, that God will lead you concerning your health, lead you concerning your marriage, your singleness, your parenting, your grandparenting, your, your jobs and your careers, your passion and your purpose, that God wants to lead and guide you. He, he has fullness on his mind for your life. He doesn't want you just to be surviving. He wants you to thrive. Amen. And to flourish in this life. The Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. And I'm telling you, he will lead you and guide you. Um, if you can hear from God you, and, and obey what you hear, you'll make it every time. Faith only works with the leadership of the spirit. Faith is not just formulas. Are you with me? And unfortunately, many Christians are led by circumstances. Let me give you an example. Uh, Lord, I I don't know if this if you want me to have this car. So let me go and see if I qualify for the finances. And if you qualify for it, then that's a signal or a sign that that's God's will. How many know that God will lead you away from open doors and into closed doors? All right. I gave the example last week of um, I went to a school to interview as a to be a middle school um, ELA teacher. And there were some supernatural things that happened for me to have this interview. Right. All the way from I knew that they were going to offer me the job right on the spot. That was one. Um. Actually, the Lord gave me a word of knowledge that they were going to hire me before they even interviewed me. 
So I saw that. And there was so much grace when I went in for the interview. And I'm telling you, naturally speaking, it seems like this is the way I should go because everything naturally was lining up. But how many know that the Lord doesn't, he doesn't lead us by the outside in, but from the inside out. So we got to be careful about being led by circumstances. It may look good, may feel good, but God may say, don't take it. Give you, so let me come back to that story. Um, there was somebody who wanted to pay for my undergraduate degree. That, that's wonderful, right? <laughs> but the Lord led me not to take it. So I walked away from it, and then the Lord forgave it years later. Amen. 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 So just because there's money or opportunities, we're not to be led by opportunities. Amen. God will lead you to close opportunities, and, and you have to trust him for the open doors. So don't go based on the external. Or, you know, sometimes people, they look for signs, right? They look for signs. Lord, give me a sign, right? They're looking for something externally. Lord, if this is you, let a red car go by. If this, you, if this, is, if this person I'm supposed to marry, may, may they make my favorite meal. So you're going to base your marriage on if somebody not make your favorite meal or not. We're not, to, we're not to be led by those things. So I want to encourage you, don't allow the circumstances to dictate to you your walk of faith. Just because it's an open door doesn't mean that you can go to it. Well, you, live, well, you and I live in a land of opportunity, so we can go and apply for 100 th different jobs. And I'm telling you, that, I mean, you'll probably get you know, at least a couple of interviews. So just because it's a door, well, d is that in line with the will of God? So supernaturally, I told my wife, I said, hey, I'm going to get this. They're going to hire me on the spot. She said, oh, you know, um, I think one time she said six, it's going to be six interviews, but I think she was just being sarcastic. Well, a couple, at least a couple of interviews, um, and they hired me on the spot. The guy supernaturally gave me the grace to do the demo lesson and everything, and they offered me a, a certain amount of money, really more money than I've ever made in my life. Um, and I took about a week and a half to think through it, and, um, and I had one for another interview. I went to two other interviews. Another interview, I kind of felt like they were going to hire me, and, but, but I was like, I was prideful, cocky, oh, I'm going to pass this interview. And what happened was they actually, um, the Lord told me to treat that interview like they were going to offer me a million dollars. And they offered me, Lord, like not a lot of money. And then um, I went to another interview this past Tuesday, and this interview um, it was the, one of the largest charter schools in, the, in the, that particular city. And I went and it was okay. And so I went and did the interview. And one of the principals, <laughs> it pays to be right at all times. It pays to be the same, to be consistent. How many know God wants us to be consistent? You got to be consistent. Just be the same. Be nice to people all the time. You never know where you end up. So guess what? The principal was a substitute when I was in high school. And he recognized, he said, I knew I knew your face. And we began to talk about all the people we knew in common. He said, oh, you're going to hear from us. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, I was in high school like just last year, you know. So I, just, I mean, it was many, many days ago. <laughs> and yet he remembered this face. <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm like, Four times bigger than I was. <laughs> and, and, and I had my little hair back then. Uh, I didn't have kid in play. Um, I had something. <laughs> Don't look it up. <laughs> but, but you understand, it, it pays to, and because I was nice, I don't know if I was, I mean, I didn't do much. <laughs> Try to just get people saved. <laughs> and yet he remembered me. So favor there. And I know, People say follow the favor, but what if you just got favor all over, just abundance of favor? All right, all right. So, so now you got choices, right? <laughs> so it, it, don't just follow the favor. You got to follow the Holy Spirit in the favor because you, you're, just because you're blessed, you'll have favor everywhere you go. Just everywhere I go. Every, if I walk in a the room, there's favor. My enemies like me. My haters like me. People, you know, just favor all over me. So God led me with, to the less paying job and I just took it. 
Are you with me? God will lead you to a job that doesn't look like, but if it can, if you, you got your time. So the job that I took was the Christian school that my boys are, 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 are go to school and they gave me the free tuition. <laughs> and I got time. I got time. Right. And it works perfectly with ministry. And they want me to teach not only English, sixth to twelfth grade, but they also want to teach Bible and theology. They also want me to do chapel once once every month or so. So I can preach Jesus. I can lay hands. There's a spirit filled school at that. So they believe in tongues. So the kids can get filled at school. <laughs> How many know God will lead you and guide you? And it's closer to the church. <laughs> I could get on the highway right closer to the church. Save me at least 20, 30 minutes from the other school that was paying more money. Time is more valuable than money. And how many people get a chance to teach their kids and, and my nephew, my niece attend there too? <laughs> All the mom, Jackie, grandkids. I can teach and have an input. So it pays to obey God. Amen? Amen. I was thinking about that money. I ain't on front. That money was good. I said, like, yo, we can buy our building next year. <laughs> like, I'm just thinking like, yo, this is a, oh, oh, it's a, oh. But how many know it pays? To follow God, you want peace and you want to flourish. And, and I'm not telling you go out and get the less paying job. I'm saying follow the Lord because he will lead you to the greater job as well. But follow the Lord. Follow the Lord. It's better to have mental peace and I can do sermon prep and I can preach and I can incorporate Jesus in English and, and wonderful and it'd be great. <laughs> so I want to encourage you today. Follow the Lord. Follow the peace of God that's on the inside of you. And today we're going to talk about training your ears to hear God. Mm -hmm. Hearing is vital to our lives. Hearing God, hearing our spirits, and hearing others. How many have been more intentional when hearing each other? Amen. Amen. Just listen to your spouses. Listen to your children. Listen to your sisters and brothers. Listen to your friends. Look for ways. Just what, what are they saying? Train your ears. Don't assume what they're going to say, but listen. Don't hijack their sentences. But listen to what they listen to the whole conclusion. What are you saying? You'll be surprised how God will give you peace and clarity if you just listen. We'll learn how to listen. A lot of times, you know, even on social media, listen to what people are saying. You're just like, man, this is the world is messed up and some of the church is messed up. It's just like, you know, everybody have this wonderful concept of being um, prophets and apostles. And, and I believe in those things. But it's too much. What, what about just, just put slave of Jesus <laughs> and rejoice in that? <laughs> uh, I mean, great titles, you know, we recall, require great responsibilities. Amen. And if you got three people in your church, you're not an apostle. I'm sorry to say. If you got 60 people in your church, I, and you may be called to it, but you got to have the works and the grace for that. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, I, I know um, a couple of people I, I deal with. Um, a pastor from Ghana that um, me, Courtney, and Alfred will be going to next year, hopefully. Um, he always calls me apostle, and I correct him. I was like, pastor. <laughs> I, I know you're trying to prophesy to me, but I'm a pastor. <laughs> don't, don't put that on me, because that's great responsibility, and the enemy will attack you for that. Right? All right, here we go. Training your ears is really a position of your heart. And in training your ears, you got to remove things that will hinder you from hearing. So there are some things. If you look at the word heart, what word is in? There's two words in the middle of heart. Here in what? Ear. Ear. So what's connected to your heart is your, I mean, yeah, what's connected to your heart is your ears and your hearing. Mm -hmm. So if I get my heart right... I can get my hearing right. Hearing right. Amen. Amen. If I get my heart right. So we're going to look at some passages about this. And we need to get things out of our ears that are clogging our hearing. You know, sometimes too much wax and different things may be in our ears. What's going on? The lies that we've believed, the deception and the doubt and unbelief. 
Uh, we, we have to be optimistic and, and have to believe the best. And at the same time, the balance of being realistic. So how, how do we remove the blinders? You know, some Christians are self-deceived. There's so many self-deceived people. They believe something and they go hard after. But don't believe it because of your favorite speakers or favorite authors or gospel artists. But believe because of the Bible. Amen. So let's, we, last week we talked about something that is crucial to hearing from God and position ourselves to develop an appetite to want to hear right, hear precisely. Um, and one of the things that we really went hard about was truth. You must be open and honest and, and open to the truth. The truth will make you free. So we got to be people who seek truth. That even if I don't like something and don't want to hear it, I'm willing to hear. You got to be willing to hear what you don't want to hear. Let me say that again. Mm. Willing to hear that what you don't want to hear. You say, okay, I, 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 I have to have that posture. Be open for constructive criticism. What is it that I'm doing wrong? If somebody accuses you of something, the first thing you say, well, is, are they correct? You know, okay, maybe I am stubborn in that way. How I many know marriage will do that? <laughs> Truth <laughs> from your spouse. You're like, oh, <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> you'll never, you know, I remember one, early on in marriage, Courtney says, you never apologize. In my head, I did because <laughs> I repented from whatever it was. <laughs> you know, but, but that's not the same as apologizing. <laughs> are, are you with me? Yes. I had to apologize to Declan last night. He was crying and upset because I was talking to my cousin and he, he was doing something and, and you know, he'd been a boy, him and Dex, Destin, and I, and, I, and I told my cousin, I'm going to beat him. <laughs> and he heard me say that and it broke his little heart. He's like, what? He, he embarrassed me. He told such and such that he's going to beat me. And so when I got off the phone, I apologized. I didn't mean that way. I, I, I was, you made me upset, and I apologized. He said, I forgive you, <laughs> and then went on playing. <laughs> Practice apologizing. Your kids need to see, your grandkids need to see you repent. <laughs> it does great things for them for, for life. You know, if they always think that you're right, and then they go and they have a conflict, then they have issues. You know, sometimes um, I know parents sometimes want to, don't want their kids to see them have conflicting discussions. But my kids have seen it all on purpose. Because I want them to know that my marriage is not perfect. <laughs> but they need to see us having come to moment Jesus and disagreements and then the resolving of that. Because if it's always this fairy tale that we are we perfect, <laughs> then they, when they have a real life situation with their spouse, then they don't know how to deal with it. I don't know who I'm saying that for. That's out there free. Psalm 51. Let's go there. You, 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 we got to want truth no matter what. Truth is, is a powerful thing. A lie will cost you, but truth will set you free. Um. This is a prayer that David prayer, prayed after his sin against the Lord with Bathsheba, and he's crying out to the Lord. Here's a man of God who the Bible actually calls him a man after God's own heart, and yet he sinned greatly against the Lord and against a marriage covenant. Verse 1, have mercy on me. So when you mess up, really mess up really bad, or just mess up in general, you should ask the Lord for mercy. God's mercy is, is something. God's mercy will heal you. There's something about the mercy of God. Don't ever run from God, run to him. So you need God. He says, he says have mercy on me. In order to ask for mercy, you know, how can you ask God to have mercy on you when you don't, when you're denying the thing that he's convicting you of? So you got to be honest with Shakespeare says this. I'm English, right? <laughs> Shakespeare says, that, you know, be true to yourself, right? Um, to your own self, be true. So you got to you got to check yourself and be honest with yourself. I never forget. I was dating this older woman. Um, it was my first real relationship. I had little girlfriends in high school and elementary school. And um, the first girl I kissed was in kindergarten. Her name was Carmen. <laughs> she was a white blonde head girl. 
and uh, and I was just in love with her. <laughs> uh, and so, uh, anyway, long story short, <laughs> um, I, this I was I was went to Bible college out in Oklahoma, and 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 um, this young lady she looks young looked younger, but she was six years older than me, and I was nineteen, and. You know, I, I just was enjoying being in a relationship, but she was looking for marriage. I said, I am not ready to get married right now. I just want to have a girlfriend. <laughs> and uh, my dad wrote a letter to me. She, he says, you need to be honest with her and honest with yourself. I didn't want to hear that. Like, why can't you be happy? I mean, she's a Christian. <laughs> she loves Jesus. <laughs> and it really stayed with me. I did not want it. I didn't write him back. <laughs> I did not want to hear the fact that I needed to be honest with myself about the relationship. He said, if you don't, if you're not serious about it, you need to let her go because she's looking to get married and you are playing with her emotions. I, I mean, here are men of God, men of faith just got finished. I mean, I'm in Bible college and, and the Lord pro prophetic words that I'm going to change the world. And yet my dad is like, you need to be honest. So I, that stayed with me, and then I broke it off later on. You know what I'm saying? I mean, no, we got to have that. Be honest with ourselves. You got to look at what's working and what's not working. You know, you believe in God for something, and, and it goes over time, and you still don't see the manifestation of Somewhere, you, you're, you're missing it. Where am I missing it at? <laughs> Maybe I'm not doing something right. Because it's never on God's part. It's always on our part. Where am I missing it? Maybe I'm not seeing this correctly. Maybe I'm believing God for something that I don't have scriptures for. Maybe I'm trying to have faith outside of the will of God for my life. <laughs> Where am I missing it? Maybe I'm basing my faith on somebody's testimony instead of the testimony of Christ. You got to come to realization like, Maybe this is not right. Maybe the reason I'm sick is not because the devil is attacking me, but because I didn't rebuke the devil when I was eating. I'm not getting enough exercise, and I'm sleeping right. I'm, I'm going to bed worrying about stuff. I'm stressing about things. Maybe God had nothing to do with it, and neither the devil. Maybe it's something that I'm not positioning myself. Are you with me? Uh, and so here's David says, have mercy on me. And he goes, oh, God. According to your steadfast love and according to your abundance, abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Notice he recognized his need for mercy. Then he turns around and then he puts it all on the faithfulness of God. He didn't focus just on his mess up. So when you mess up and you sin, which you will this week, <laughs> uh, you ask God to forgive you. And you don't stay in that place. Oh, God, oh, God, please forgive me. Oh, God, God, forgive me. God will forgive a murder as quickly as he forgives lying. Let me say that again. God will forgive a murderer as quickly as he forgives lying. Consequences are different. You may be some, we probably write you in, in the future. We have somewhere to go and develop a prison ministry. <laughs> but there is, you know, God will forgive you. Um, there's a lot going on with um, some well-knowns, as they call celebrity pastors, specifically out of Texas. And there's big, big scandals happening right now. And the Lord said this to my heart. I didn't hear audible voice, but on the inside, he says, God forgives and people don't. That set me free. I said, wow. Wow. That 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 profound statement right there, those you know, God forgives, people don't. So we got to protect our reputation. Amen? Yes. Amen. Lord, you know, protect us, keep us, have mercy. So notice David is focusing on God's love, uh, on his abundant mercy, and about the God, that God is blotting out his transgressions. Then he goes, he says, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. When you sin, you really need to <clears throat> not just be so, oh, Lord, forgive me. But, Lord, deal with my heart. Why did I do what I did? You know, Lord, where have I missed it? Lord, wash me thoroughly. Deliver me from not only my sins, but my iniquity, my bent, my, my propensity to, to do something or the thing that keeps 
causing me to go in this cycle of sin. The wickedness, iniquity, right? Cleanse me, cleanse me from my sin. Then he says, for I know my transgressions. <laughs> um, you don't ask God just to forgive you blindly. You know where you missed it. For I know my transgressions. I know where I've missed it. And my sin is ever before me. You know where you missed it. Are you with me? You know where you watched stuff where you shouldn't have watched. You heard things and you said things you should have said. You know where you meditated. You got, you got to be honest with God because he already knows. And against you and you only have I sinned. And done what is evil in your sight. You know, really, when we deal with the conviction, the conviction of the Lord, that when the Lord convicts us of our sin, we're dealing, God sees us where we missed it, and he allows us to feel the guilt of it. He, he allows us to feel that this thing is wrong. You need to feel guilty about doing something that is sinful. If you don't, you've, you've become numb to it. The first time you do something wrong, you'll feel it. The second time you keep repeating it, you feel it a little less. And you keep doing it. It's just like drinking uh, coffee, hot coffee, or hot chocolate, or hot tea, and how it burns the nerves over time, and you're not sensitive to the heat of it. How many times have we sinned and we're not sensitive to it because we keep repeating the matter? We become dull and, and insensitive to the conviction of the Holy Spirit. You don't want to ever remove that conviction. You want to welcome the conviction of the Lord. When he says, wait a minute, you know what you did was wrong. You know, you know, you know that harsh word that you said towards that person. You, God will convict you. The Lord will allow you to feel that. And he goes on, he says, um, that I send e this evil thing in your sight so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. For I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. And he says, verse six, behold, you delight in truth. How many know that God delights in truth? Everybody say, God delights, God delights. In, truth. in truth. In the inward being. God delights in truth. Crown wants to preach with me. <laughs> he says, yes. <laughs> um, God delights in the inward truth. He delights in truth. God is a God of truth. Everybody say, God is a God of truth. God truth. He wants us to be truthful. And he says, you teach me wisdom in the secret place. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. And he goes, let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins. Blot out all my iniquities. Then this is the part. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. You know where you missed it. You know where you've sinned and you know where you've been lying. You say, Lord, create in me a clean heart. Give me a truth telling spirit. Give me a, truth tongue, a truthful tongue. Remove um, hypocrisy out of me. Remove that which has brought shame to your name. He says, cast me not away from your presence, but take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with all well, a willing spirit, with a willing spirit. So here it says, restore to me the joy of my salvation. Truth. God is, and truth is, we said this last week, truth is non-negotiable, non-negotiable. Truth is truth because it's truth. It's not, and I know in our society, we say my truth, your truth, that's a lie. It's my, really they should be saying my perspective. Truth is truth. It's not your truth. Truth is, it doesn't belong to anybody. <laughs> you understand? You can't own truth. Truth owns you. <laughs> and you, you got to say, hey, I, I missed it. It is what it is. You know what you did was foul. You know what you did was wrong. You got to be truthful about it. Whenever you're tempted to lie, resist it. Here, David desires truth. He knows that God desires truth on the inside of us. And God wants to create a clean heart. 
I want my heart to be clean before the Lord. Because if I get my heart clean, I can get my ears unclogged. My heart is connected to my hearing. And sometimes we don't hear right because we, we, our hearts are not right. You got to check your motives. Check, always look and say, okay, why am I doing what I'm doing? Why did I say that? You know, uh, you, you want to be, be careful of that. Let's go to a, a couple other scriptures before we get to our body. Um, John chapter 8, John chapter 8. Training, training your ears to hear God. Training your ears to hear God. John chapter 8. Let's take a look at this. And you're, this is a familiar scripture. John chapter 8, verse 31, 32. Says, so Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, if you abide in my what? Word, you are truly my disciples. <clears throat> if you're going to be a disciple of Christ, you got you to live in that place of his word. Uphold his teachings. Verse 32, and you will what? Know the truth, and the truth will do what? Set you free. Uh, the word, if I get in the word, I, I prove that I'm his disciple. I'm his disciplined follower. And I'll know the truth, and the truth will liberate me. I, I, I want to be free. True freedom <laughs> is allowing his word to set you free. It, being set free from the lies that we believed about ourselves and about this world. I want to be free from lies. I don't want to tell lies and I don't want to believe lies. I want to believe truth. Truth is truth because it's truth. And Jesus says, I am the truth. He's not a truth. He's the truth. And sometimes in people's sins, they, they want their sins to be affirmed. Like it's okay. It's not okay. <laughs> you got to be willing to say, no, I reject that. As far as me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. We're not going to believe that. We're not going to endorse that. We'll love you, but we're not going to say that that's okay. It's not okay for Christians to smoke. It's not okay for Christians to smoke weed. It's not okay. <laughs> Are y'all with me? Or the herbs. No, no, no. You, you're abusing something that God created for another reason. So, so let's, not, let's not deceive ourselves. You want people to affirm that that's okay, but it's not. It's not. <laughs> Just because it's normal doesn't mean that it's true. Glory to God. So resist the temptation to lie, to believe a lie. Um, don't suppress the truth. The truth will always liberate you. Um, Ephesians 4.25, we don't have time to look there on in, in, uh, New Living Translation says this, stop telling lies and let us tell our neighbors the truth for we are all part, we are all parts of the same body. Stop telling lies. How many know we got to stop telling lies? You, you know how, you know, you know how it is when you're tempted to lie. To tell something that's not right. You got to be honest. And so, you know, yep, you, you're right. You're right, pastor. You're right, husband, wife, children, friend, family member. You're absolutely right. It, I'm telling you, it's liberating. Um, let's go to Hebrews. No, excuse me. Let's go to Mark 11. This is a familiar scripture, and usually we, we use this when we talk about faith. Mark 11, and let's take a look at verse 22 and 23. Mark 11, verse 22 and 23 says this. Uh, and Jesus answered them, have faith in God or have the same kind of faith that God has. I mean, I love this passage. I, I can meditate on it for years. Have faith in God. How many know you got to have faith in God? Verse 23, truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, there was an actual mountain there. And Jesus says, whoever say to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass. It will be done for him. So this scripture tells us that we can have what we say. You know that I'm, we are people of faith and we say confessions throughout this church, right? We confess what we are believing for. And I'm telling you, it's something about it. I, I can stay on that subject and preach every single day about confession because it has changed my life. 
Hey, you're here today because of our confession. <laughs> I'm telling you, we're getting, we're getting stronger every day because of our confession, right? So we, we, we believe that. And so here, Jesus says, have faith in God, whosoever say to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, so not doubt in his heart. So faith is of the heart. So you can have doubt in your mind and faith in your heart. All right, you'll catch it on the way home. But believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for. I believe that when I say something, it's going to come to pass. All right. So what if you are a liar? So if you are, you know, you ever seen somebody, they believe their own lies. They'll, they'll tell you they're convinced. And there's there's um, and I, I haven't looked at the research, but there's women who believe that they're pregnant. And they're just and it actually start manifesting in their bodies and there's no baby there. <laughs> Are you with me? <laughs> uh, you can believe your own lie. So um, here Jesus is saying we got to believe what we say shall come to pass. But if you are lying, <laughs> you believe that God is just like you. So therefore, it's not going to happen because you believe that God is just like you. Isn't that that, that's powerful, that passage, right? So you got to believe what you say will come to pass. But if you're lying all the time, how can you have faith in God? Are you with me? Lying will hinder your faith. We got to tell the truth just for the sake of my faith. Well, for, first and foremost, to bring glory to God, because God delights in truth. Second, I don't want anything to hinder my faith. So if I'm lying, my faith is not working. I can say these confessions, but it's not going to happen because I don't believe it. Because I don't believe my own self. The first person you believe before God is yourself. You're quick to believe yourself before you believe God. So you got what you say. What you say. Let, let's go to a scripture to echo this. Um, uh, Hebrews chapter 6, real quick. I want you to see this. Hebrews chapter 6. Training your ears to hear God. Everyone said, training your ears to hear God. Hebrews chapter 6, and let's look at verse 18. Hebrews 6, verse 18 says this. So that by two unchangeable things in which it is what? Impossible for what? For God to lie. We who have fled to refuge might have strong encouragement to hold fast to the hope set before us. Here it says, we know that it is impossible. Everybody say impossible. impossible. It's impossible for God to lie. What's possible with men is impossible with God. And what's possible with God is impossible with men. So it is impossible. It's possible for men to lie. It's possible for men to sin. It's impossible for God to lie. It's impossible for God to sin. One of the um, everlasting characteristics of God, that God is not a liar. It's uh, Numbers 23 says, um, let God be truth, true, and every man a liar. God, God is not like man that he should lie. God it is impossible. God cannot lie. And yet in Ephesians chapter five, verse one and two, it actually tells us to be imitators of God, even as dear children. So God expects his children to be people of truth. I'm telling you, this will transform your life. If you desire truth and desire to speak it and desire to live it and desire to be it. Amen. Now, when you make your confession of faith, you're not lying. Right. Um, I went to the specialist and I had some sinus, um, some sinus uh, issues going on. And, and he was asking me, can I breathe? Well, I'm not going to sit there and make a, faith, a statement of faith. Because oh, I, oh, I can breathe. Then why are you here? <laughs> the fact is, I can't breathe. Right. But the truth is, is by his stripes, I'm healed. Amen. So I need you to give me that medicine, that steroids, steroids and open up my lungs and and so I can breathe. I was struggling last month and so. I don't know if you can tell when I was preaching, I couldn't breathe because my, my, my airways were closing. 
because of the post nasal drip that was coming from my sinuses, infecting my lungs, and treating it like it was asthma. I was like, oh, oh God. It was, it was a struggle every single Sunday. Every single Sunday. And I'm like making it up here, like, and I'm smiling, and oh, he got developed ears. And so I was like, I don't want to go to church. See, it's easy. Y'all, if y'all don't want to go to church, y'all don't have to come to church. I got to be here every Sunday. <laughs> like, oh, God. Come up the stairs. Oh. Everybody's like, how you doing? I'm like, oh, good. <laughs> I don't know if y'all know I was short like the last month or so. Real short with you. Like, yeah, good. Because yeah. <laughs> I wanted to just get somewhere to sit down because I couldn't breathe. <laughs> but I had to be truthful with that, that specialist, ear, nose, and throat doctor. And I said, I need, I need something. <laughs> and he looked at it and he said, oh, man, the polyps are growing back. I, was, I had surgery a few years ago, and they went in and they took all the polyps that was, I had, you know, in my sinuses, right? You know, your sinuses make most of your face. Three quarters of them was packed. And he said, I don't even understand why you're breathing. I, how are you breathing? God. <laughs> he said, well, we're going to have surgery. We're going to go in there, and we're going we're gonna to cut them all out and suck them all out. And y'all, some of y'all were here during that time. And I'm telling you, and he's like, I said, where did they come from? He said, we don't know. <laughs> you might have got a cold when you was two and never got healed. He said, they grew back like a vengeance. I said, oh, no. He said, he gave me some stuff to shrink them. And, and of course, the power of confession. Now I can breathe. <sighs> but what if I lied and said, I'm, 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 I'm I, no, it's, a, it's a, you have your faith before you and God. My confession is not for my neighbors, for me. So between me and God, I confess, 1 Corinthians 14. I keep my faith before God and I go in and I go hard and I call those things that are not as though they were. But with other people, I tell the truth. You know, and I'm not saying that you go around and, how you doing? I'm horrible. I'm about to die. No, 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 don't do that. <laughs> you say, I'm okay. <laughs> Things are getting better by faith. You can just say that. But you don't have to be, just bleed out on everybody, right? I mean, it's okay to bleed out in front of your pastors and, and your spouse and like, you know, I just need some encouragement. But, but that's different than just bleeding out to everybody. <laughs> are you with me, right? Yeah. God, it's impossible for God to lie. I want to tell the truth. I want to be truthful. Lord, help us, right? We're talking about holiness. You really want to be real holy, just be real truthful. Not real carnal, not real real. When people call real, is real carnal. I'm just real. I hate everybody. I don't like the white man. I don't like the black man. I don't like the Indians. No, 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 no. We, we're not, that's not being real. That's real carnal, right? What some people call real is real carnal. We, 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 if you want to be real, be truthful. You know, and, and, and again, you, how many know you have to have wisdom when spe speaking the truth? Because truth spoken out of, se out of season is damaging. Yes. Right? You got to be per you got to be led even in telling the truth to somebody. And you got to use wisdom. I never forget there was a young man who sent me and Courtney um, some music and, 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 and he was rapping and we were listening to it and we just... Um, it wasn't good. <laughs> it was garbage. And, and he was waiting for a response, so we, didn't, we never got back to him. <laughs> but I'm so glad he began to thrive later. You know, and so I, well, we could have destroyed that young man. <laughs> like, oh, it's horrible. You need to throw that mess away. <laughs> but we didn't do that. Are, are, are you with me? You got to be careful about... You tell truth, but you tell it in season and in love, in the right, you know, flow. Because I'm going to show you here. Let, let's go to a couple of scriptures. Um, John 3, 19 says this, that men love darkness rather than the light. So the reason why some people are not truthful and they can't train their ears to hear God is because they love darkness. People love their mess. They, some people love drama. Some people love lies. They want you to pump them up every time they come into their presence. I know of, I've heard of artists where you got to call them Mr. or Mrs. and you can't look at them in their eyes. Oh, you, you out of here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you got to be out of your mind. Uh, we, we have to be careful about appeasing humanity's pride. Just like, no, nah, we need Jesus too. I'm not going to say things to pump you up. Sometimes another form of lying is telling people what they want to hear. Um, you know, it's just, we got to be honest. And again, we got to do it at the right time. Many deceive believers because they refuse to believe the truth. Some would much rather stay in their darkness. 
Um, he, let's go, go with me to John. Well, we, since we're in Hebrews, go to Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. And let's look at verse 11. It says, About this we have much to say, and it's hard to explain since you have become what? Dull of hearing. The, the writer of Hebrews, Hebrews is, is actually saying there, I have much to say to you, and it's very hard to explain, but be, because you have dull of hearing, dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, but you need someone to teach you again. The basic principles of the oracles of God, you need milk, not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness since he is a child. But solid food is for the mature, for those who have the, their powers of discernment, what? Train by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. So you got to dwell in truth. You got to live in truth and, and you got to practice um, practice distinguishing between what is good from evil. The only way you can do that is if you're truthful. You got to call a spade a spade. And you can say, this is not right. right. We, we, you know, you, you have to be honest. That one church, and you heard me say, say this, I went in and when I walked in, I felt like somebody was biting my back. And I said, Lord, what is this? And the Spirit of the Lord said to me, there are bite, there's people backbiting the pastor and his wife. And when I got up, I said, well, you want to pray to prophesy or what? He says, do both. And I did both. And both the pastor and his wife cried. He said, you had no idea that people were backbiting us. And then there was a little small split with that church. Sometimes you feel things and you're like, okay, how do I say this? You remember um, Samuel, the boy Samuel, he ministered to the Lord. Wasn't, he wasn't familiar with the voice of the Lord, the Lord kept calling him. And Eli began to tell him to, to say, here am, I, here am I, Lord, speak. And the Lord spoke and he began to bring judgment to Eli's house. How many know that you got to be willing to hear what God has to say? And God was not always going to tell you how wonderful you are. We know you're wonderful because he made you wonderful because he's wonderful. But he's going to also be deal, he's going to deal with you in light. He's going to deal with pride. He's going to deal with selfishness. He's going to deal with those things. All right. You got to be willing to hear it and get up from your prayer. Not condemn, but, feel, you know, hey, OK, I, I'm going to do better. I'm going to be better. I'm going to live right. This live this out. One time I remember I was praying and praying and the Lord said to me, you're a liar. I said, what? He's the strongest. You know, excuse my name is Dwayne L. Wright. He says, you're a liar. I said, what? <laughs> I repented. Well, how did you lie? You can lie by not telling the truth. You can lie by, by appeasing people. At one point, I was a, a people's pleaser. I, w I would beat around the bush sometimes. I remember one time a youth called me, me and Courtney, and, and uh, he was just wilding out. And, and I was like, well, you know, it's not God's best for you to be doing this. And Courtney said, let me have the phone. Stop chasing tail. He gave the phone back to me. <laughs> so it was just like <laughs> here I am like you know God you know you know God has a better plan for you you know this is sinful I did save a sin but of course it was like stop chasing, chasing, chasing tail just stop it and gave me the phone back <laughs> whoa he's like oh whoa whoa I said yeah I, you got your word God bless you <laughs> You got the pastor and the prophet all at once. <laughs> Are you with me? Um, we, we can't be, and, and I talked about this too, and it bears repetition. Um, if you're a spouse or you got kids at home, you should not have to walk around eggshells in your own house. You should not be able, you should be freed to be able to talk, you know, be yourself and truly tell and, and how you feel about stuff when you're at home. If home is not a good place, something is wrong. That's, that's, that's our safety. The, the most important place is home. And you should not be afraid to tell the truth because somebody is in their feelings. All right? Like, oh, you know, I just, you know, you know he don't like that. Oh, she doesn't like that. Oh, break all themselves. <laughs> just like, no, no, we ain't doing this no more. <laughs> and you, you got kids at home. No, I, no, you, this is my house. <laughs> you, you don't like it? That's the door. God bless you. My love is the same. But listen, 
you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to walk in fear in your in our own house. <laughs> Are you with me? <laughs> we got to be bold. Com- confrontation is good. Everybody say confrontation is good. Conflict is good. Sometimes you just got to deal with God will deal with you in conflict, conflict with God. You know, Jacob and God wrestling. And there's that spirit of deceit on Jacob to the place he has to remove his name, change his name. He has to he has to hit him in the hip. So I got to hit it. You know what? I, the thought I got to deal with you. I got to deal with that deception. <laughs> God is not going. If he loves you, he's going to chastise you. He's going to change you. You may come as you are, but don't stay as you are. Come on, change. He, he calls us to change. Almost finished. So here we see that the reason why the writer of Hebrews could not speak the truth to them because it was hard for them to hear. Go real quick to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, real quick. Training your ears to hear God. What does that have to do with truth? It's posturing your heart, acknowledging sin, then willing to change when God convicts you. The conviction, I know some people say, well, the Holy Spirit only convicts the world, and it's your spirit that convicts yourself. Whatever you want to say, there should be some kind of conviction as a believer. You cannot do what you want to do. And feel okay with it. You have the spirit of Christ inside of you. You got the word of God. He got his name sealed on you. His blood is available to you. And you can't be the same. Something happens when Christ comes inside. You cannot be the same. It's not okay to be in our sins. All right? I know people, all kinds of stuff happening. But it's not okay. It's not okay to allow your taxes. (laughs) <laughs> it's not okay to lie at the movies. I, you know, when they say adult is 11, year, 12 years old. I got a 12 year old like, oh man, I'd have paid an extra $5. <laughs> then don't go to the movies, right? Just stay at home and wait till it come on where you can pay at home, right? <laughs> we got to be truthful. Even the little stuff like that. I do have to admit, I went to the movies a couple weeks in a row and I brought my own stuff. <laughs> I got to confess, confess my sins. <laughs> Everybody's packing. Little Declan got his little snacks. I got my snacks. Get sodas. Yeah, we're going to hit up. One time I took Chick fil A in there. I'm like, yo, yeah. <laughs> Conviction. <laughs> God, y'all pray for me. I, I still got to, like, you know, I need some help with that area. <laughs> I just like, yo, you ain't gonna spend more money on the food than you do the ticket. <laughs> it's like that. Yeah, everybody get Declan, Destin, Courtney, Mom. Everybody got this stuff. Get the big bags. Get the backpack. Uh, and recently, <laughs> I'm gonna be confess. Um, Miss Benita's grandson and Chris grandson um, Nas stayed a couple of days with us. And so Declan, Destin removed. You know, sometimes he deals with allergy. He removed. He had a tissue box. Removed the tissue. Put some snacks under there. Put some tissue on top. We walked. In, like, hey, what's up? Now I was like, I got mine, too, PD. I was like, oh, Lord, I got the kids deceiving. I confess my sins. I, I still haven't read where it was wrong, but it's somewhere. I know it's, I don't even want to read it on purpose. I was like, hey, reading that. I don't see, see no, I'm not held accountable, but inside, I'm like, you know, you're wrong. What do I do? Well, we've got to figure that out. Uh, Hebrew, um, 1 Corinthians 3, I just confess. Uh, truth, truth. Yeah. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2 says this. But I, brothers, and it really says brothers and sisters, cannot address you as spiritual people, as people in the flesh, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk and not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now, you're not yet ready. Here's the Apostle Paul could not tell the truth, could not present the the whole truth because they weren't ready to hear it. One last scripture before I let you go is 1 John, excuse me, John chapter 16. John chapter 16. John chapter 16, and let's look at verse 12 through 15. John 16, 12. I still have many things to say to you, what does it say? But you cannot bear them now. So we see Jesus, the Apostle Paul, 
And we see Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews, saying that they had things to say, but the people weren't ready to hear it. So again, just because it's truth doesn't mean that you need to speak it all the time. You got to be led in telling the truth. Am I saying you to, telling you to endorse a lie? No, what I'm saying is you got to use wisdom with telling the truth. You got to tell the truth in love. And you, sometimes you got to tell, give people, you know, spoon bites. Just like a little at a time because they're not ready. Sometimes truth spoken out of wrong season could actually do more damage. So you got to be careful. Amen. Amen. Training your ears to hear God. God doesn't always tell you everything that's wrong with you. What in one session <laughs> with God, one encounter with God, he just downloads everything that's wrong in your life. You will be messed up for the rest of your life. You're like, oh, man, just kill me, Lord, <laughs> because it's just so much. Right. <laughs> yeah. Let me talk about your attitude, your spending habits, your mindset. Let, let me just and he just go. Thank God he doesn't do that. Right. Yeah, yeah. Through grace, he just tells us a little ahead of time. Yeah. <laughs> OK, you need to work on this. <laughs> And, and some of us, we don't even work on that little thing. So he, he got a lot more to tell us, but just little, train your ears to hear God, even the small things. I know that um, I got convicted years ago of, of taking the shopping cart, making sure I take it back, and, and either in the little, little place or inside. I remember George Meyer said, you know, how can you take authority over the devil and you don't take authority over the dishes? You know, just little stuff like that. Like, you know, the Lord convicts you. Uh, sometimes, you know, it's hard to pray in a cluttered house, a cluttered room. And so God will convict you. Say, hey, get your clean, clean, clean this house. <laughs> and then I'm able to speak to you clearly about some things. Are you with me? So we got to obey even the small things. And it starts out little by little. Every day you can hear God get your get your journal, have your Bible. And I'm not telling you you spend hours and upon hours and upon hours. Let's just say 20 minutes. You spend time praying and, and fellowshipping with God. You're reading your Bible scriptures, right? Our Bible scripture reading and you doing your own little study. And then you begin to write down, you know, the things that you're getting in prayer. It may just be a phrase. One time he told me, he says, I want you to pray for an hour a day in tongues and I want you to lose weight. I'm working on the lose weight part. <laughs> I, I, are you with me? Yeah. Yeah. Little stuff. The little things. It's the little foxes that spoil the vine. So we got to work on the little stuff. God will speak. He'll, he'll train your ears to hear little stuff. Be faith, faithful on the little stuff. What did you get? You know, I need, I need to stop cussing. I need, to, I need to use another word. I, I need to stop doing this. I need to stop watching this. I, I need to guard my eyes. I need to make sure that I, sometimes it's hard, especially on a job when somebody's gossiping, that you, you, you want to, you know, you know it's wrong, but because of pride, you don't say anything. And you actually jump into the conversation. It says, no, nah, we, we, you know, I don't want to talk about that. Sometimes we present things to people, an image, and we try to keep that image up. If you present yourself, and I'll give you an example, present yourself as a nice person. You're, oh, he's just nice. She's just nice. And then you don't want anything to take away the image of the niceness. So you don't ever confront you, you, you portray as a, pass, a passive person. But inside is tearing you up. I mean, no, you, you got you, you to, gotta, you know, say, no, this is not okay. I may be nice, but I'm not stupid, and I got courage. Courage is really strength under control, and I, I have strength. And so you don't take my niceness as meekness, or as, as, as weakness, but take it as, as I'm a strong person. You walk in authority and he says, no, I, I, I don't agree with that. And I love you, but I don't agree with that. You wrong. You are wrong. It's OK to say that to people. Develop your hearing. And again, the takeaway is every day, you know, write down what you get. I got journals of stuff that the Lord spoke to me. Just journals. Just write it down and go back and revisit it. How many times you take notes in church? Right? And you never go back to, to the notes. 
I mean, you just got notes and notes and notes and notes. Oh, that's a good word. But you, you haven't applied the last thing. And yet we want God to speak to us about a new, fresh things. I'm called to the nations. The nation starts with you. How many are going to practice the presence of God, hearing from God every day? Take, get your, maybe you're not old fashioned like PD, you got notebooks, you got the little notes on your little smartphone, create a file and write down things that God speak to you in prayer. God will speak to you about your children. One of the um, things that I, I knew about our first son, the Lord spoke to me that he was going to be a mighty warrior. The second son, I heard these words, trouble, trouble. And when I heard that, I was like, oh, man, you trying to prepare me for this kid's going to be trouble to me. But the Lord says, trouble, 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 he will be to the enemy. Amen. And I wrote it down. God will speak to you. God will speak to you. First kid, we, I knew both were going to be boys. First kid, mighty warrior. Second kid, he's going to be a trouble to an enemy. Triple. You, 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 get, you write down stuff what you get. God doesn't give words. God doesn't give words for them just to entertain your mind. He gives words for you to hear them and for you to pray them out. And for you, if you get a prophetic word, take hold of that word. You know, um, and, 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 and use your faith with it. Amen. Don't just don't throw God's words, spoken word to us and put it in the trash. Don't do that. Don't just, oh, that's, that's good. Take that word and, and receive it and war with it and think about it and, you know, have your scriptures on it. God wants to speak to you. And even now, God is speaking to you. And when you obey him, you train your ears to hear God and you obey what you're hearing, your increase is connected to that. Your joy is connected to that. And one of the things that when I made a decision to which school to go to, whether I go for the money. Right. And I just got finished talking about chasing the bag. As long as you got Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Right. A couple weeks ago. And then or you take the less paying job, but you got more joy, more peace and more time. And you got a way to be invaluable. I get a chance to teach my own kids and my nephew, and my niece in a way that I don't get a chance to do. So what do I take? I take the and I get more. I, there's, when I think about it, it's more joy. So when God speaks to you and leads you, there's there's a joy that comes with that. It's not. I know people say, oh, I, I didn't want to be a pastor. He dragged me in the past. No, no, no. So I, I, got, I question all that. Because when God calls me to something, there, there, he puts a joy in me for that thing. And there's an excitement about it. Man, I can't. Oh, man. Every, I, I, look for, I look forward to preaching every week. It's not a burden. <laughs> the burden is the studying, <laughs> right? But, but oh, I, just put me up there. I, oh, I can do it with my eyes closed. You know, there's a joy with it. So when God speaks to you and leads you, there's joy with that, Amen. that he's calling you to. There's an excitement about it. There's a peace about it. There's a cleanness, a cleanness about it. He's like, man, I can't. Oh, man, I get excited about it. he restored the joy of my salvation. I'm true to myself. What the, the, the things that he's placed inside of me, his gift look good on me, you know, and when I function in it, I make the world a better place. I'm going to add to this world as I fulfill the will of God. As I pastor you, the great people of God at KLM, it's a joy to pray for you. It's not a burden. Oh, I got to pray for these people. every. No, Lord, let me pray. Lord, part your glory. It's a joy to carry the burdens to weep when you're weeping and rejoice when you rejoice and be there as a sounding board and a check, not a decision making as you make your decisions. <laughs> Are you with me? <laughs> Sometimes people are like, oh, that's what you think. <laughs> no, what do you think? <laughs> I can't tell you what to do because if it goes well, you'll give me glory. If it goes the other way, you're ready to kill me and leave the church. <laughs> so we ain't going to get involved. I'm just going to give you a general wisdom. Of God. Are you with me? Yes. Practice. I want you to, this week, I want you to practice what you get in prayer. Practice that you study in the Word. Just write it down. What is the Lord saying? He's speaking more than you are listening. All right, say, God is speaking more than what I'm listening. What is he telling you to do? Go back to school. What is, it, what is he telling you to do to pursue a career? What is he telling you to do? Do right by your job, what you, what you have. Be more content. What is he telling you to do? Love your kids more. Pay attention to your kids. What, what is he telling you to do? To be a, a better sister, a better brother. What is he telling you to do? Give more. 
Come on. What is he telling you to do? What is he speaking to you? What is the Lord moving on you? Get organized. Declutter. What, what is he saying to you? Block this person. Let them go. Cut that relationship out. Embrace that new relationship. <laughs> Be free. Do something that you never did before. Live your life. You got one life to live. Take a risk. <laughs> the Lord will tell you to take a risk. Not necessarily a leap of faith, but a step of faith and take a risk. Say, so, you know, we're going to do something we never did before. Oh, we're going to we got one life to live. Oh, God, I thank you for leading me and ordering my steps. I'm going to have more joy. I'm going to live large. It's, it's great faith to go to Africa. I've never been before. Go with people. I only talked over, over WhatsApp. But I have a relationship with somebody who knows them, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's not totally strange. Don't be crazy now. <laughs> I do not go in places, strange lands, that I don't have some type of relationship with the person. Or somebody, there's a connection there. Are, are you with me? People want me to come to India. I don't know you, and I don't know anybody connected to you. So I, therefore, I'm not coming. Unless the Lord says, I know in my heart, and my wife has the same thing. Oh, it's time for you to go. Oh, we ain't hearing that. <laughs> I'm going to say it right here. Here's the video, YouTube. You can play that. Because <laughs> well, last thing I need you to do, I'm over there. I can't get back. <laughs> and, I, and Lady Courtney's like, y'all pray for PD. <laughs> Lord, we got 24 hours clock. We got to call them back into the United States. <laughs> All right. Are, are you with me? Yep. How many are going to spend that time this week? Even tonight when you get home, just you and the Lord, just write down what you get in your spirit. You, oh, well, what if I'm not hearing from God? Okay, it's not the end of the world. That's the best place. I started prophesying in secret way before I did publicly. And if it wasn't right, one time I prophesied to my wife, and it did not make any sense. I said, the Lord said, you're going to be your boss's boss. That's crazy, right? Guess what? Within a couple of years, she was her That's boss's right. boss. Yes. I think I hear from God a little bit. <laughs> I'm telling you. I, I, um, I remember we believed in God. We were, things were financially tight, and, and uh, we believed God for our mortgage. And, um, but in the meantime, our washer died. And so... I got a prophetic word that the Lord, the Lord is going to let you know that I'm going to provide for the mortgage by providing for the washing machine first. And a partner of this ministry called me up and says, I was in prayer. The Lord said, what you need? And, and so I'm here. I'm like, oh, it's just a washer. He said, no, no, there's something more. I said, I need all of it. <laughs> the washer and the mortgage. He said, well, I can't do the mortgage, but here's for the washer. He paid for the washer and the money came for the mortgage a couple weeks later. It starts out little small stuff. Are you with me? Yes. Just a little stuff. It, he orders your steps. He tells you, don't go down the street this today. You just have a desire. You may not hear those words. You just, you know what? I don't think I'm going to go that way. Come to find out it's an accident. <laughs> or, or, you, or traffic. He'll, he'll lead you away from the traffic. <laughs> Says, you know what? Take the long way this way. And then you're like, man. And come out, find out later. What if you don't know what happened? It's better to miss, you know, to miss it than to be in the midst of it. Little things. In order to grow and, and even get confidence in the bigger things, you start out hearing the little things first. You know, and, and the Lord will lead you and guide you. If you have it in your heart not to do something, you say, Lord, it's, you know, Okay, in the beginning, you're saying, Lord, this is me, you, or the devil. But if you're saying, still saying that 20 years later, something is wrong. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So you should not stay at a place that is me, you. You should be so familiar. Because you're familiar with the word, you're familiar with his voice. So what do I need to do? Where am I missing it? Okay, Father. So I want you to close your eyes here. Close your eyes. Go ahead. Unless you got kids running around already, right? you got to keep your eyes open to one kid. <laughs> Father God, I, I thank you for leading your people. I thank you. They belong to you. We are the, sh the sheep of your passion. So you lead us and guide us. You call us by name. What is the Lord saying to you now? What is he saying? 
What is he reminding you of what he already said? And we said last week, it's, it's the what and the why and the how. That's all those things are together. So he'll fill you with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Where, if he's telling you to repent of something, repent from it. There's mercy for your sins. There's mercy, listen to this, for your mistakes. God got more mercy than you, you'll ever have mistakes in this world. So there's mercy. So if you miss it, it's not the end of the world. If you think you heard something and you find out, because we know in part, we prophesy in part. Spirit of the Lord is leading you to do something. Spirit of the Lord is reminding you of something that he's put on your heart. Rediscover and retrain your ears to hear the, hear the Lord. And again, it's not necessarily a voice, but it's promptings, it's desires. It's, it's, there's joy connected with it. There's, there's an inner witness. There's an inner bearing in with your spirit. There's, there's a strong impression. There's a holy suggestion. There, there are things that's, that's coming up. What shall I do? You know, talking to that person is, is not good for you. It's okay to be bold and be truthful and say, you're not good for me. So I need to let you go. You make me angry when I'm around you. I feel empty every time I leave your presence. Or, or, or the Lord is prompting you, telling you to take a risk and, and be a friend. Embrace a new friendship. Don't compare your old friendships with the new Friends that he wants to bring in your life. What is he saying to you? What is he leading you? He's speaking to you about things. And I want you to obey that this week. Walk towards him. Whether it's, whether it's to exercise a little more. Go walking. Whether it's, you know, what is he telling you to do? Clarity. I, I speak clarity to your mind and peace. Hearing from God is, is one of the, the major keys to, to, for success. Fulfilling the plans and the purposes of God for your life. What is it he's telling you to do? He speaks to you. Yes, he'll speak to you about other people. But right now he wants to speak to you about you. Whether it's to bring conviction of sin, whether it's, it's to tell you to step out and do something you've never done before. What is it telling you, going back to school, telling you to stop school, telling you to put a pause on it? What is he leading you to do? Mary told the man at the wedding, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Your miracle is connected to your obedience of hearing from God. Let me see you. How many have, know what you're supposed to do? Raise your hand. Let me just see about the hands. You know what God has spoken to you. Go ahead and do that. Dedicate yourself to do it. Just make a commitment to do it. Whatever it is, with your children, with your grandchildren, with your spouse, with, with singleness, God, God got great things for you. He'll never lead you into defeat. It may look like defeat, but in the end, it'll be for your benefit. Amen. What is he telling you to do? Just go ahead and do it and trust him. There's joy with that. And remember, if he was leading you to, to do it, it may be a closed door. He'll require your faith. He's always going to require your faith. He says, use your faith for that closed door. And just because it's open doesn't mean that it's God. And just because it's closed doesn't mean it's not God. All right? Amen. I hope you got something out of today. That concludes this week's message, and thank you very much for listening. For more information about Kingdom Living Ministries, please call us at 732-324-2200 or visit our website at kingdomlivingnj.org. Also, you can write to us by mail at P.O. Box 1854, Perth Amboy, New Jersey, 08862. And lastly, 
If you would like to partner with this ministry through your prayers or financial support, contact us via email. The address is partners at kingdomlivingnj.org. Our prayer is that this message has encouraged you to live out the kingdom of God daily in your life by your obedience to his word. Until next time, God bless you.